what is going on youtube it's your boy spanko and today i'm excited because i'm showing off a deck that i haven't done in a long time probably like five or six months or so at this point and that is altergeist now altergeist was one of those decks that was really really into the meta then it kind of fell off but i really wanted to show you guys how to play altergeist competitively in today's format so if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. Now this week I randomly decided to do a full week of deck profiles. So Monday to Friday you guys are going to see five days, five deck profiles. Make sure you guys stay tuned. So make sure you subscribe because otherwise you're going to miss all the heat. You're going to miss all the content. You guys don't want to miss the content. So yeah, I hope you guys do enjoy. I hope you guys are subscribed already. And with that, let's get into the deck profile. So just before we get into today's video, I do want to say that I'm going to be showing you guys a combo at the end of the video. Now there are multiple combos for this deck, but I do want to be showing you guys that this deck is a really good mid range deck and you can actually have OTK combos with this deck, but you also have really good first turn boards outside of just set four pass, which everyone says this deck basically only does, right? So there are a lot of cool combos and cool concepts with this deck. So we're going to start it off with three Altergeist Marionetter. Of course, this is one of your best normal summons. It's actually the best normal summon in your deck, I would say. And this card with either Mila Seek or Multi Faker in hand is just full combo on its own. So this card is nuts, of course. Three Multi Faker, of course. You can't not play three. This card's too crazy. Then we have three Mila Seek. Mila Seek is really, really good, especially for a lot of the combo lines now. Mila Seek is really, really relevant. But also, this still is a really good normal summon for you because at the end of the day, you go into a link one with this. You get to search a Multi Faker. So this is always going to get to set you up with a Multi Faker. On top of that, this has a really cool second effect, if you guys didn't know, where it can attack your opponent directly. And if it does battle damage to your opponent, you can send one card they control to the graveyard. Now, it's really good because it does not destroy destroy that card it sends the card to the graveyard then we're playing one pukri pukri is still an insane card you still got to be playing this card it's a one of in the deck the card is super super nuts it's always searchable with your combo as well so this card is really really good just at one two silk with this of course this is a disruption for you you got to play two as well as one concrete now like i'm back and forth between concrete all the time but concrete is just way too good i think you have to play the one of now moving on to the altergeist trap cards here now of course keep in mind that here we have them set up as engines more so than monster spells traps so just keep that in mind when you're looking at this but the altergeist traps we are playing triple personal spoofing this card's too good not to play three of you have to play three of what if it gets ashed okay sure but this card has too high of a ceiling to not play at three so you have to play three two protocol protocols insanely powerful for you as well as one altergeist manifestation now i know a lot of some people like to play two manifestation i think it's perfectly fine at one if you guys didn't know silk just has an effect where if it's sent from the field to the graveyard you can add back an altergeist trap card from your graveyard so this is always going to be recycling your manifestation so that's why i only play the one of and we're playing the one brick of the deck the entire deck has one brick and it's this card haunted rock now Haunted Rock is what enables a lot of your combos. So that's why I personally decided to play the Haunted Rock myself because the deck has just such a high ceiling with the Haunted Rock. Yes, it's a single brick in the deck and I won't lie to you, it is a brick in its own. However, this card just enables so many things for you that you have to be playing it as one of. Now, if you guys really don't want to, I'm going to be showing you guys the combo at the end of the video so you guys can stay tuned for that and see maybe if it impresses you. But if you guys don't want to, you could play the second manifestation instead of the Haunted Rock here. I just really think this card just does so much for the deck that you have to be playing it. Then moving on to the hand traps here, we're only playing three Ash and one Veiler you guys might be wondering why the one Veiler well this actually comes up because we do have a Celine OTK combo here Celine into access code and Veiler can come up in that situation and you can also make Hulk because Veiler is a tuner so is your ashes so there are times you can just normal summon one of these go into Hulk and have like an OTK combo but that's why I just really like the one Veiler because it gives you another uh, target for your Celine even though all of your Altergeist cards are spellcasters anyway so you'll always have Altergeist cards specifically the nice thing about Veiler is it gives you access to something like Hulk which can summon this straight from the deck and then you still have set up just from that right so that's why i do like playing the one veiler as well as the three ash then you're playing three infinite impermanence now imperm is just way too powerful in this deck unlike other decks of course imperm is just a great card in those decks but the thing is in this deck imperm multi faker is just full combo and it's just so nuts because even if you're forced to go second if you imperm a card even if the imperm doesn't have super high impact like let's say you hit an aluber right just randomly if we're talking about the despia matchup and they already have brand infusion in their hand it doesn't really matter that much because the reason you're really wanting to activate this is to get a multi figure on the on board which means that you're automatically going to get a bounce on your turn zero literally turn zero you haven't even taken a turn yet and you have disruption that's how good this card is and this combo i guess you could say is so you have to play three imperm of course so that's it for the hand traps we're only playing the seven here again the veiler is just really good for the Hulk. so but the ash and the imperm are way too important and then we're playing three pot of extravagance as you guys can see it's the only spell card we're playing in the deck outside of called by the grave but this is also the only draw power we have in this deck so you can also play prosperity don't get me wrong i know a lot of people are gonna be like hey spanko can you play prosperity Yes, 100% you can. The reason I like Extravagant Soul in this deck is at the end of the day, you are playing a trap-based deck. And when you're playing trap-based decks, you really want to have as many cards in your hand as possible, especially if you get the chance to draw into like two of your floodgates or a solemn strike and a floodgate. 
or an imperm and a floodgate like that just becomes way too powerful prosperity yes is really good because he lets you pick the card that you add to your hand which is really nice but prosperity is a one for one whereas i just feel like a deck like this just needs as many cards as possible so that's why we're playing extravagance then like i said earlier we're playing one call by the grave this card is just way too nuts you're not even using it to hit hand traps honestly i mean i guess you could but really the biggest part about call by the grave is hitting your opponent's cards like this card is such a big impact in the metagame right now you have to be playing it as a one of and then we're playing three solemn strike three crackdown and three anti-spell so i'm gonna talk about these choices a little bit because there's a lot of different choices you guys can play one of the other choices that i considered playing was rivalry of the warlords rivalry is really really powerful in today's format but i did choose crackdown for a few reasons now one of the main reasons i picked crackdown over rivalry like rivalry is a great card right but the reason i really like this is because i wanted to have multiple win conditions in this deck of course you're playing stuff like the altergeist cards which can be a win condition on themselves with hextia and whatnot but the reason i really like this is being able to take one of your opponent's monsters think about a lot of the metagame right now right just being able to take your opponent's monster is so powerful because it's going to give you access to some cards in the extra deck for example like lina like dark which you might already have access to because faker and, and marionetta are light and dark respectively so of course you're already going to have access to these but being able to crack down let's say you're going against a punk player and you take their Xiamen or they take their deer note when they summon that and they can't go into chaos ruler a lot of their combo is going to like fall pretty hard or you take your opponent's Hulk of Fibrax if they're making a health combo this card is just so nuts in so many situations because you can also use that card that you end up actually taking from them right now rivalry is really really good because rivalry breaks a lot of opponents boards it makes your opponent really difficult to play through rivalry however the thing is with rivalry is it's not good into every deck specifically and it does hurt you in a sense where it does take away one of your best otk combos which is your selene otk combo which is really nice because this deck of course you can poke and do a lot of small damage here and there however one of the best things this deck can do is just have access to access code pretty much anytime it wants and then you're going to be able to otk from there because one of the things that this deck always struggled with is just finishing games off and this is what you want to do with this deck right so i think get crackdown gives you that ability and makes that even easier for you rivalry is still a really good card however it kind of shuts off your own combo sometimes so that's why i really like the crackdown crackdown is also really good going second because something with like solemn strike like if you combine these together this deck does go struggle a little bit going second right so if you are forced to go second you can set the crackdown set a solemn strike and then on your opponent's turn when they try to do something or they try to attack you you can go crackdown they'll probably have a negate for the crackdown and you're like okay well if they have a regulus let's say or they have you know any sort of monster negate whatever it is an omni negate baron maybe even and you go crackdown target a card and they're gonna go like baron negate or they go regulus negate something like that then you go solemn strike then you essentially broke your opponent's entire board with these two so these two cards are insane going second you have to be playing these two and then i just played triple anti-spell because anti-spell itself is just so powerful this format against pretty much every single deck a lot of decks are playing the adventure package even the ones that are not if you're thinking about despia like they're really reliant on their power spells there's so many power spell cards in the game right now where if you can just shut your opponent out for one turn you can just set up enough where your opponent is not coming back from it so that's why i really like anti-spell the only spell card again that you're really playing is extrav i guess you could argue call by but this is never going to interfere with you're called by really so this card is just nuts you have to be playing this at three in this format especially in a deck like this that can just kind of abuse it then for the extra deck here the extra deck is kind of self-explanatory we are playing two memory gant three hextia now you can argue play one memory gant and one prime banshee you guys can do that as well i just never saw a situation where i really like the prime banshee whereas memory gant is really good also as an otk option for you so i really do like the memory gant of course three hextia one dark one lina these two are really important because again your marionette is a light your multi is a dark so as long as you're not using the multi faker effect to special itself then these two are really live for you and then these two can give you access to something like a Selene into an access code so you really want to be playing these cards and another really nice thing about these cards is when dark or lina are destroyed they get to add monsters with light or dark with 1500 defense or less from your deck to your hand and so multi faker has less than 1500 so you can search a multi faker you can't search a marionette unfortunately but you can actually search a veiler you can search a veiler with this so that's why i really like lina and dark as well if these do end up coming up they're really really powerful but of course we are playing the one hulk as well you have your ash you also have your veilers that are tuners for you you can also crack down into a tuner so you can take one of your opponent's tuners to make help and again this is going to give you access to your selene combo then you have one selene one access code of course i am playing one unicorn and this is the thing you are playing extrav at the end of the day so i do want to say this i wanted to play one unicorn because unicorn can come up and there's a lot of situations where unicorn is really really good however i will say this if you guys have a second access code talker 
maybe play a second access code talker instead because like if you use extrav and you banish your access code it kind of takes away that whole line which kind of sucks so maybe play the second access code here i just wanted to show you guys that you can play this unicorn here instead but two access code might even be actually more preferable it's really up to you but i will say that one of the dark one line and one hulk is still very good because this is still essentially three cards that get you into the combo so banishing any one of these doesn't really matter whereas banishing the access code kind of does matter so maybe a second access code here and then we're playing three link Kribo as well as one anima then Kribo gets your Milliseek to the graveyard so it's very important to play these and then anima is really good also going second so yep this is this is a deck the deck is really really powerful i think this deck is really really strong and really competitive in today's format i'm going to show you guys a quick combo on why haunted rock is actually such a good card okay so there's a lot of different hands on a lot of different ways you guys can do combos like this however i want to show you a very simple combo it's marionette and Milliseek. you guys can also do this combo with marionette and multi-faker so there's different ways to do this combo but marionette gives you access to the haunted rock which is so so powerful so i'm going to show you guys how a combo a very simple combo two cards the other three cards in your hand don't matter as long as one of them is a trap honestly it doesn't really matter you're winning the game at this point so yeah marionetta and mila seek is all you need we're going to start off by normal summoning our marionetta activating its effect to set a haunted rock from your deck to your side of the field it's nice because it can't get ash so that's really nice now haunted rock is the effect where if it's set by an altergeist card you can activate it this turn so you're going to activate the haunted rock and you're going to get to pitch the mila seek because you have to pitch an altergeist for it however However, now you have an Altergeist in the graveyard and you have a Haunted Rock on the field, so you can activate Marionette's second effect to pop the Haunted Rock to summon back the Milaseek, right? So this is a very simplistic combo, and I know you can go deeper, especially if you have the Multifaker here instead, because Multifaker will get you an extra summon and you guys can keep going, but this is a very basic combo. So now you have Marionette and Milaseek, you can use these two to go into your Hextia, which is really nice here. And if you think about it, if you're going second into a board that's not that crazy, you can also go into something like Lina and then take your opponent's monster and then go into Axis Code. So there are OTK lines with this combo as well, but I'm just going to say going first, you get to go into Hextia. So you're setting up Hextia and you're going to get to activate the Milaseek here and Milaseek is going to search you a Faker. So now you're setting up Hextia Faker and you're going to have three other cards in your hand. So as long as one of them is a trap that you guys can set, then that's all that really matters because you activate a trap your opponent's turn, you summon faker you summon silquidus and then you're gonna get the hextia for the silquidus you're also gonna get the silquidus bounce so there's just so many different ways to do this and then you're gonna get the silquidus to bounce the faker back to your hand to bounce a card they control you're gonna get the hextia as a spell or trap negate so it's really really powerful because you're gonna have your traps you're gonna have a uh, multiple disruptions with this combo and all you really need is the one marionette with either milaseek or multifaker if you do multifaker the combo even gets better you get double hextia but if you guys want to see a combo video let me know but yeah i just wanted to show you guys haunted rock puts the ceiling of this deck just so so high so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy now this was also guys for today's format i hope i really explained my card choice as well and i really hope you guys also enjoyed the combo because i wanted to show you guys that this deck is now more of a mid-range deck there's ways to make hextia turn one you're not just setting three or setting four and passing and just hoping your opponent doesn't break your back row board so this deck is now just a little bit more flexible with the way it plays so i really think this deck can be competitive in today's format I don't think it's tier one. It's not one of those decks, but it is still competitive. And I think it can take a lot of people for a surprise because people just won't be ready for it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys did. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you guys all for watching. Remember, five days, five deck profiles starting today. Get excited. And with that, guys, Spanko signing out. Peace.